I don't normally make these new release videos anymore, but I was curious to see what the new experimental features brought out in Elemental Pro 3.1 brought to the table. There's talk about big improvements due to the improved asset loading along with the recent optimized DOM output feature. Now it is worth noting though at this moment that both of these features are either in alpha or beta phase. So they are not the final and should hopefully improve as they get tested and undergo more development time. Okay, so let's take a look at these updates and new features by starting off with a simple speed test. Oh yeah, and I've included timestamps in the description so you can jump to any of the features that interest you or just go straight to the end and my conclusion. Now this is still alpha, so it's not a final by any, any sort of means. So if you want to test this out yourself, you can do, just make sure you don't do it on a live site. This is one of the experimental features. And if you wonder how to access this, you simply come into settings inside Elementor, experiments, and there are the experimental options. Now you do need to have Elementor Pro installed for this. And there are still things that they're working on. So this is a really early version of this improved asset loading. So I've created a simple test page, which you can see here from one of the templates that ships as part of Elementor itself. So there's your general kind of images, fonts, and so on on there. There's some animations and things like that. I've created a header and a footer from one of the template files, and that's all that's on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to run two tests. We're going to run a dashboard GT metrics test, and we're going to run a PageSpeed Insights test on Google. So I'm logged into my account on GT Metrics, so I'm going to be testing this out on the closest server to me, which is where this is going to reside in the UK. And what I'm going to do is just hit that on there. We'll run Analyze on that while we're waiting. We'll jump over to PageSpeed and we'll do the same on here. So this is testing things out now without that experimental feature enabled. I am running this exactly as you would with a normal version with none of these enabled. So let's just wait and see what we come back with, and then we'll enable the actual option itself. So almost there. Okay, so this is what we're coming back with, which is already a pretty acceptable starting point. Decent one second load time on there, nothing untoward, but still room for improvement with a performance of 91. Let's hop over to PageSpeed Insights. This is what we're getting on mobile, 49, and what we're gonna get on desktop is around 77. So. Again, not too bad with no optimization being run or anything on here. So let's go back into our test site now and let's enable the improved asset loading option. So we'll set that to active and we'll save those changes on there. So now that's been activated, that should remove any unused code or only load it when it's actually needed. And this is kind of what this is trying to do is it's only gonna load the assets you need when you need them. And therefore you should end up with less code, faster website, how much difference is it going to make? I don't really know right now, but let's give it a test anyway. We've got our results in, so let's just refresh this page, see if there's any issues on there, if everything is still looking the way it should do. Everything looks pretty good, to be honest. Let's head back over now to this again, and we'll just retest this, and we'll do exactly the same on the PageSpeed Insights. We'll reanalyze this test page. So again, we're going to let that run through and see what kind of results we come back with. Okay, so we're back with those results, and as we can see, there's no real difference going on. We're still getting a 91-100. The time to content, sort of first paint of the content is 1.2 seconds, but I would never take too much notice of that. If you've ever seen any of my videos where we talk about speed and using tools like GT Metrics, it's not something you should take too much notice of because it depends on traffic going to the site at any one particular time. There's a million different factors. So... Everything else looks pretty much the same. There's not a lot of difference there. Let's hop over to PageSpeed Insights, and there's a slight bump of improvement there when we're working with the mobile version of this. Taking a look at the desktop, you know, marginal increases, not anything to write home about. So let's come back and let's just take a look at optimized DOM output, which again should reduce some of the markup that's being used in this. So this experiment includes some markup changes. So make sure that if you want to test this out, you're not testing it on a live site for obvious reasons. But let's enable that as well. And we'll save our changes. And we'll refresh that page just to make sure that we're running a fresh copy of that. Again, just check everything looks okay on there. Nothing problematic. And we'll run a final test on here. And we'll do the same for the PageSpeed Insights. So let's let those run through and see if there's any noticeable increases or decreases in performance based upon these changes you've just made. 
Well, as we can see, mobile is actually looking a little worse and desktop about the same kind of thing. So nothing too much there. And we'll just wait for this now. And again, pretty much exactly the same. There's a slight difference in the total blocking time, a slight increase. But again, that could be down to lots of different factors with regards to traffic, go to the server and so on. So the first impressions are there's not really much going on there when it comes to the speed of the site. Now we've run a few benchmarking tests. Let's take a look at if there are any changes in the file sizes of the pages with these options disabled and then enabled. To do this, we'll use Pingdom to show us the HTML document sizes. Now I've already gone ahead and run this, so you don't have to watch me doing it. So first of all, this is the file size we had when we have those new experimental options disabled. So we're coming in around about 850K for the page. However, when we run the same test with those optimization features enabled, we're coming in at around 770. So there is a saving there. So this is gonna be something that will ultimately translate into a slightly faster load time. Not anything I would have thought is gonna to be too massive. And if we take a look at the request, requests, for example, you can see there's a couple of difference, but three uh, sort of request difference. But again, everything that you do is gonna make life a little bit easier to optimize your site. So it's good to see that we are seeing some changes there. It's not really translating into the GT metrics test and the page speed insight tests, but like I say, this is still early days. This isn't working on the pro version, I understand. I think it's only affecting the free version when it comes to working with optimizing those uh, asset loading sides of things. So this is something that when Pro is adopted into that and this goes into beta phase and so on, we should hopefully see more improvements again on top of what you can see with these. So that's one of the first things. I wanted to test that out to see what differences this was actually making. Now next on the table is the custom code options, or as I prefer to call it, code snippets light. Yes, if you're used to working with the free code snippets plugin from our very own Verdi from Elementor, this is going to seem pretty familiar, if a little basic right now. Now, if you've ever used code snippets, this is going to feel very, very familiar to you. And well, let's take a look at it. So you say add new custom code. And from here, we can do a couple of things. We can give this a title and we'll just call this Google Analytics, for example. Then we can choose where we want to put this on the priority. And we'll come back to those in a moment. Let's just put in our little bit of code, which is our Google Analytics code. Now, a couple of things to note on here. We've given it a name. We can choose a location from three different places, the head, the body at the beginning, and the body at the end. Now, some code doesn't matter where you place this, whereas things like Google Analytics prefers to be inserted into the head section of your page. So choose whatever is the right option, but you have three to choose from at this point in time. Next up, you have your priority, and your priority is basically which JavaScript, which CSS, for example, which takes precedence, which comes first, second, third, and fourth, and so on. So this is where you can use this, and by default, it's gonna drop it in as priority one, but you can change this to whatever you want to. So it's just, like I say, a priority kind of thing, which is the most important, which has to run first. Some may have dependencies on other things, those kinds of things. And this just allows you to kind of control that aspect of it. Now, if we take a look at the actual editing text area itself, you can see we get this little exclamation mark. So this gives us inline information about any of the code that we place inside here. And we're not limited to working with JavaScript. We can work with CSS, all those kinds of things. So you can get creative with this and you can drop various different things in. And like I say, if you ever use code snippets, this is going to be very, very familiar to you. So once you've done that, we can just simply hit on publish. And this is then gonna give us the option to choose what condition we want to use to display this particular block of code. So you can run this in specific locations. You can include it, you can exclude it in the same way you can do this with any of the template files that you set up inside the template section of Elemental Pro. So you can see include and exclude are options available. We can choose entire site archives and singular. We can click on there and then we can break things down to the various different sections. So you can have different code snippets for various different parts of your site, get creative, different JavaScript effects, different CSS effects, those kinds of things. Whereas something like this Google Analytics code, we wanna place that on the entire site. And you can stack your conditions on top of each other exactly the same as you can do with the template feature inside Elemental Pro. So once you've done that, hit save and close. That's now been added into the head section of your page. Now, if you wanna check out that code, you can simply come over to the page or page, any page on your site, and we're gonna just right click and we're gonna say inspect page source. 
And if we scroll down, we can see there's our page source inserted into the page for us. If you're logged in as an administrator, you can see there's comments available to you there. If you're logged out or anybody else would see that information there. So really easy to include this into your site. And like I say, if you want to check it out, you can check it out there. So that's basically how you use the edit code option. And much the same as everything else inside you, if we come back out and go to our custom code, this will list all of the custom code we have, including the instances, the different conditions we set up, the location, the priority, where it's published. And if you've got multiple authors who actually inserted this particular code snippet into the site. If you run a website or a blog that has a need to include code blocks on the page to demonstrate how to do various coding things, then this is going to be useful for you. For anyone else, well, you may just want to skip to the summary at the end of the video. Now, there's one other feature that I do want to draw your attention to, which isn't a particularly important one for a lot of people, but for anyone that does a sort of tech blog to do with coding or anything like I do with the WP Touch site, one of these new features is going to be quite useful, and that's the code snippets option. So, or code highlight, I should say. So you can drag that option inside there. And what this does is it gives us the ability to drop code in of various different sort of types, PHP, HTML, CSS, and so on, and then output that and allow people to copy it, see exactly how it's sort of set up, as well as, well as configuring it in different ways. So let me just show what I mean. Let's take out what's in there already, and let's just drop in that same little bit of analytics code. So you can see this just displays it in a nice block tells us this code in the top right hand corner. And what we can do is we can change the language. So depending upon what you're actually outputting to show people, it could be HTML, for example, CSS, SAS, less TypeScript, all those kinds of things. And there's a lot of options inside just that's really cool to see. So we'll just leave this set as JavaScript. But if we change it to something else, you see nothing really changes on screen other than what you might see in the top corner to tell people what is actually going to be output. So let's just set this back to JavaScript. And what we can do then is we can control the different styling options. So we can enable or disable line numbers. I personally prefer those on there. Have the copy to clipboard option so you can enable or disable that. So it's quite nice if you want people to easily copy your code without all these numbers and things in there, you can just use this copy option in the top corner. Do you want a word wrap for longer lines? Again, you can choose what you want. And then we've got some interesting things in different themes. So you can see there's a range of different themes inside you. So we can style this to match your overall look and feel for your site itself. So we can set up what you want inside there. So pretty cool to see those options. Let's go back to, let's just choose dark for this example. Ooh, that's actually quite horrible. That looks better. I quite like the look of that. And again, you can adjust things like the height, the font size and so on to make sure it fits how you want. And you see there are no real styling options because everything is kind of controlled for this content area and it's kind of done for you. So you only really have options for advanced, which is things like your margins and your paddings and things like that. So nothing really too advanced inside there, but it is kind of useful, like I say, in the right circumstances. And the nice thing is it looks pretty cool too. Okay, credit where it's due, Elemento do seem to be listening and looking for viable ways to both streamline the code and also reduce some of that inherent bloat that comes from all page builders built on top of WordPress. But at this point, those improvements are fairly minimal and not really anything to write home about. That being said, it is still in alpha build and it doesn't as yet include the additional code reductions for Elemental Pro. That should be coming soon, so I will take another look when that's released and run a couple more benchmarks to see if there's any noticeable improvements. Now, the custom code feature is nice and useful, but I wouldn't say it was a priority. There are far more useful features that could have been implemented, like the ability to build custom post loops, custom breakpoints. I know, let's not hold our breath on that one just yet or a myriad of other features that really do need fleshing out. All in all though, for me, this is a mediocre set of experimental features, and I really hope that we see some leaps as opposed to these baby steps that we're seeing in the near future. But I'm more interested in your thoughts about these latest set of features. Are you excited, underwhelmed, or simply not interested? Let me have all of your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, as always, all of the applicable links for everything I cover are in the description. So if you want to check those out, you can find those there. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. That really does help me out. And if you enjoyed the content, well, why not hit that subscribe button and slap the bell icon. But if you didn't find the video useful or informative, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. And that's a wrap.